today I'm going to talk about the Dark Knight event, the new character that I've been playing, and just a few things that I wanted to go over about this exciting time in Black Desert Online. I believe this is the last new character class to be added for probably a little while. I, I haven't heard of a new one. You'll notice that there we have now big mega servers. Last night, every single one of these servers was extremely crowded because of the introduction of this new class, and it, yesterday was the first day that it was available. And I just wanted to point out that these Olivia servers are special buff servers. So, in here, this is especially for new players after, that bought the game after December 2nd, 2016 or who had not played the game in 30 days, who had been absent from the game for 30 days prior to the December 2nd date. So as you can see, I cannot participate in these. And what it does is it gives a 200 XP buff to those new and old returning players. So what I did was I actually had made two Dark Knights, because I made the first one, and then I thought, oh, there's a couple of things I needed to fix, so I changed the eyebrow, I kind of wanted slanty eyes and stuff, but I made a second one, I just ended up not liking her eyes. And that's pretty much all I had changed, maybe, maybe a little bit of tinting on her hair, but, and, and I did give her bigger ears. So I just kind of don't like her as much as the other, the first version that I made, so I won't be keeping her. She's already level 21. It took me about four hours to level her. Okay, so there's a couple of events going on right now. There's Seal of the Dark Knight is some seals that you collect. Everybody will get these while you're in combat. Dark Knight seals. And you use these to trade in to get black stones, which are used to improve armor and weapons. So there's there's that. The other thing that's going on is an XP boost of 20% during the week, and then it will be 100% buff on the weekend. What's really nice about this game is that once you've learned something in the game basically a lot of your characters can share basic quests like life skill quests and contribution quests and knowledge so if you already know things your characters share so you can see these are progress levels for different types of knowledge that i've already done on my other characters. When you're making a new character, it's not as hard to progress. There's one thing, one less thing, you don't have to keep repeating or duplicating some very boring basic, basic quests, crafting knowledge or getting to know node people, that kind of stuff. You don't have to do that on a second character. I'm just doing quests of a certain type. So I'm just doing the beginning quests. And I'm just doing down here at the bottom. You can see only only this combat quest is checked. All the others are grayed out here at the bottom. So that is the only kind of quest that I'm focusing on right now. The other stuff is uh, life, fishing, and contribution point, and that kind of thing. So this one is only accepting combat quests. Now I can see other quests that I've started with my other characters. My level 51 character has a lot of stuff left to do, and it's still available to this character, which is kind of weird, but... I'm not going to be taking those quests. 
So I'm just going to be following, I'm not going to do any of these alchemy quests, none of that stuff. I'm just going to do the story quests for this level of character. So I'm just going to stick in this 1 to 50 zone for her. And so far I haven't done anything about having upgraded weapon. I'm leveling so fast it's almost no point. By the time I get to level 50, I'll have access to PvP. And if you've heard me before, you'll hear me again. It's, that's not my thing. So I will have to stop because I do intend to go ahead and fully level this character. I will have to stop and start worrying about my gear about that time. Also, if I get into any combat with characters or NPCs that cause me to die a lot, then I'll probably upgrade my gear somewhat. But until then, this has been super easy. I really haven't had... She's easy. To me, she's just easy. My first character is, is a ranger. And she had a difficult time. I mean, I've already been through several of the beginner bosses and not having any difficulty at all. Really, I'm not having problems with even getting to low health. She just plows right through everything. The only thing that really kind of bothers me, which is, might be a little bit hidden by this... Okay, she, she kind of stands around like this with her big sword. Or when she goes idle in combat mode, she plays with magic in her hand, which is kind of cool. But then when you're running and you're in combat mode, now I, I made the small I made her small. She's small. Body type is the smallest body type available. So let me see if I can scroll out here and watch her run. This kind of bothers me. She runs around dragging this big sword in the ground. Now, I don't know if, if she was a much taller character, if I had picked a, a larger body type for her, if that would be as annoying to me as it is now. I mean, it just seems kind of wrong to be dragging this beautiful sword through the mud into dirt. Wouldn't that make it less sharp? I don't know. So she can kind of, she has some really nice moves. She moves really fast, and she is pretty deadly. So she can just kind of go right in here and. No problem, these monsters. I've been enjoying her a lot. You know, going from a ranger, I also have a sorceress, which is a whole other situation entirely. So this is probably the most melee character that I've dealt with up here. There's a big guy. But then also she'll throw out some, uh, like a magic bomb at people. And the knife is so big that it really has a nice range on it. So she doesn't have to get right up in their face. I'll have to do a little bit more research the higher level, more higher level she gets so that I actually unlock the right skills. So already I've seen that people are level 56 on the Dark Knight. Basically, that's it. That's kind of what I've been doing. I've enjoyed playing her so far. I, I'm not I'm not a fan of the dragon things through the mud thing. She does go a lot faster when her sword is not out. So I'm going to go down here, and she basically just takes care of mobs. This, this thing really just deals with mobs nicely. Boom! Oh, 
what's that? This should give me some challenge, but no! These are not some of the toughest ones. When I get down to the orcs, it'll be a lot harder. You know, there are still things on my character sheet that are not leveling, and so if you're gonna do a new or even a second character and you've never done a second character before, do notice that things like strength and health are not leveling because, or even breath. So, there are specific things that you have to do to level these that are separate from doing combat. So to get breath, you basically need to run or walk everywhere. If you use a horse, you're not going to increase the stamina pool. This is your stamina pool. Strength, you need to increase this by traveling around with a bundle on your back. So you need to go to one of the trade managers and pick up a bunch of bundles and then uh, walk all over the place with that. And health you increase by eating food. Even though I can probably get to level 50 in a day or two at my rate on, the, on my casual playing uh, three or four hours a night, I still won't have these up to where they need to be. So that's just something to think about for speed leveling. Also, some of these other skills won't be leveled because I'm not doing the life skills or the training or processing any of that stuff on this character at this point. Those are some of the things to think about with this game. It's not just kill things and gain level. It's there's still a lot of other things that you need to level in your character sheet that is not related to combat. A long time ago, I did a video last year about the auto walking. See, here's somebody here training her new character in uh, strength right here. You're just carrying a bundle. It's like that. And what they'll do is usually set up an auto path that goes through a safe zone, especially when you're a high, higher level character and susceptible to being uh, player killed. You have an option to auto loop, so you would just click this auto loop. Now she's already got a destination preset, so she could auto run to that new location. But when you pull up the map, you can set the auto loop so she would run back and forth, back and forth, and you can actually minimize the game while you're sleeping. And you can see here that if you want to minimize the game, you can send it to the tray. When you send it to the tray like that, it actually takes up very, very little resources from your computer, and that way you can stay connected to the game and continuously auto loop back and forth, back and forth. So while you're sleeping or away at work, your character can be leveling their stamina or their strength. Or you could be running a horse back and forth, so you could be leveling a horse that way as well. They also have auto fishing, so you can level fishing in that same manner by just setting it to auto level until you're until your inventory is full of fish. So your characters also share all the housing that you've already obtained, all of the contribution points, all of the pets. So it's very friendly for having any sort of a um, alternate character. That's it for now. Just wanted to kind of do a little update about the Dark Knight. I'm enjoying her. I'm having lots of fun, so thanks for watching. <laughs>